Hey everybody, we're going to do a quick tutorial on how to use Adobe Premiere um, just like the one we did with Final Cut Pro but this one is going to uh, also include how to work with equi rectangular or flattened videos. First going to go over the spherical video in Final Cut Pro because there are a little bit uh, differences that you need to be aware of to, to have an effective editing session in this. So first thing I'm going to do is create a new sequence. Sequence should match the spherical ratio of the of the video which is 1504 by 1504 I have a preset right here you'll see the settings are a 2997 frames per second it is 1504 by 1504 um, and it's going to be an H264 when it, when I render it out so I have a 1504 by 1504 sequence and when I import my test videos in Sometimes in Premiere, you will get a notice that says, hey, do you want to change it to the, the, the settings of the clip, or do you want to keep the settings that you've, you've made? Always keep the settings you've made. If you've made a 1504 by 1504, 29.9, keep that. Do not let it change it to the clip settings. Something in Premiere sometimes makes it uh, think that it's a 59.9 frames per second and you get some real crazy things that happen because you're not expecting it to have changed the frame rate by that much. So the, the key is to always use the settings that you set up. That's the most important thing or difference with this and Final Cut Pro. Everything else is this just the same. You can use, you know, you can bring in it, bring in music, lay it down there, edit it any way you, are, you can. Um, and export it just like anything else. Cut it up, chop it up, do whatever you want. As long as you export it back out to 1504 by 1504, you will get a file that you can play inside the director, and then you can export that out as an equi rectangular with metadata so you can put it up into YouTube or Facebook. So with this, I can cut out a few things. then go export it back out and I'll have a perfectly good file to use back inside my director. Okay, so that's working with spherical videos, which is great. Now I want to get into working with equi rectangular videos. So these are the videos that you've already you've already flattened with director and they come out as a, as a, as a real um, long rectangle and that's the actually what YouTube and Facebook are are looking for uh, with the right metadata. Uh, let me see if I can go new sequence. I have a director export sequence which has a frame size of 2560 by 1280. So it's going to be a lot longer than it is higher, um, and it's a QuickTime H.264. You'll see it spreads out there. I have another test file here, bridge from director, export. Once I bring this in, you're going to see that it's a lot, it's flattened. It's got all the video, video there. It's just been unwrapped from the circle down to a flattened version uh, so that it can be can be seen in, in Facebook and YouTube. Now, the important thing to remember here is if you're working with this, you've already kind of flattened it through Director, the very first export of Director, it's going to have the metadata in it. You're going to be able to immediately upload it to Facebook or YouTube. If you take it into this editing system, Pr Premiere or Final Cut Pro, as when you export it out, it's going to kind of destroy all that metadata, and we're going to have to put in, uh, we're going to have to re-put in metadata in order so that YouTube and Facebook will will think of it as a 360 movie. A lot of people think that you can just use the spherical video and just run the metadata tool on that, and it and it'll do it. No, that's not the way it works. The way that it works is. Uh, the metadata tool doesn't change anything with the video. It just tells YouTube and Facebook, hey, treat this as a 360-degree video. And, and so if you put it on a spherical video, it'll just 
try to treat that spherical video as a 360 video. It won't change the, the aspect ratio or do anything different to the video. As a matter of fact, when you, when you add the metadata to this video, it's not going to look any different. It's all just in the, in the code so that when it is uploaded to YouTube and Facebook, it knows what to do with it. So say we just want to take out a little chunk in the middle here. We, we want to add music or whatever we want to do to it. We'll do it here, put it back out, and then render it, export it back out. I'm going to export, export it back out at maximum depth. I'm going to do two pass for sure at about 20 megabits. So once we have that out, we'll say where to, where to put it, desktop, bridge flat. Okay, once that's done, we can go look, bridge flat, we can open it up, we can see it, it's just like it was, except it's, it's shorter because we cut out the section. Now, since it went through Adobe Premiere, it has no metadata. If I uploaded this to Facebook or YouTube, it would look exactly like this. There would not be any 360 uh, attributes whatsoever. So what we have to do now, since we did go through an uh, external editing and we're not going back into director to flatten it out and upload it where it puts back in the, in the metadata, we just want to upload this. We are going to open the YouTube 360 video metadata to tool. We're going to open bridge flat, click spherical, save as, Bridge flat injected right back next to it. Quit that. And now this bridge flat injected, even though it looks no different than the other one, it now has the metadata needed for Facebook and YouTube to recognize it as a 360 degree video. And it'll be completely interactive when you when you upload it. So an important thing to remember is when you're working with spherical videos or flat ones like this, you can edit it just like a normal video if you, if you watch the beginning of the tutorial and then export it back out as a 1504 by 1504 spherical video, bring it into Director, and then export it to Equirectangular or that long rectangular flattened version and that will put in the metadata needed so you don't need the, the step for uh, the 360 metadata tool it's only when you've already flattened it you like you maybe you like editing with the flattened version better and so you edit what you need to edit and before you when you export it before you put it up to YouTube or Facebook you're gonna have to go through that extra step of adding the metadata back in in order for it to be interactive I hope it helps I know it can be confusing but uh, once you do it a few times, it's really a pretty simple and, and fun way to kind of get creative with your videos. So let me know if you have any questions. And uh, thanks again.